Yo, peace. It's Deron Chavis. I'm here at Sankofa Community Orchard. Here just to show y'all a little bit about what we're doing and what we're working towards. Um, you know, today we plant a couple trees uh, and I want to just kind of walk around with y'all so y'all can see what the action's all about. So today I'm going to show y'all a little bit about planting trees. Today we got this uh, cherry tree that we're stalling at Sankofa Community Orchard. Um, we got this tree from Edible Landscaping out in Athens, Virginia. They're a pretty reputable company. You know, they've been doing this for a long time. I um, mean, they take very good tree, uh, they take very good care of their trees, uh, the ones that they sell to community and to businesses and all that. Um, this is a, a Kristen tree, a cherry. It's a Kristen cherry. So, uh, does well in zone seven. The trees we already planted, we've planted probably about six other cherry trees. So this will be the seventh. Um, we're gonna try to uh, make sure that all of the trees that we put in have uh, pollinators. This is not a self-pollinating variety. Um, this is a sweet cherry. It needs a pollinator. So we had to have another cherry tree that can uh, pollinate it. So um, that's one element of getting fruit trees that you always got to be aware of is whether or not the tree is self-pollinating or pollinating or needs a pollinator. Um, another thing to be aware of is uh, whether it's a dwarf or semi-dwarf variety. Uh, this is a semi-dwarf variety, which means that it's only gonna get but so tall. Um, dwarf varieties probably get about four to six feet tall. Uh, semi-dwarf varieties get between six to maybe 12 feet tall. Maybe they get a little taller. Um, but no taller than like maybe uh, 14, 15 feet high. Um, just a regular tree, you know, without uh, it being semi-dwarf or dwarf, you know, they can get pretty tall depending on what uh, variety it is. But um, what it is or what happens is that these uh, trees dwarf and semi-dwarf or even just trees for uh, orchards in general are usually grafted on to a rootstock that allows it to um, grow to a certain height. So these, um, and, and, and also allows it to uh, do well in a particular climate or set of conditions. One of the things that we're gonna be doing today it's just kind of like digging a hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and dig the hole uh, for the tree so that you know we can put this in the ground. And I'll tell you a little bit about uh, what you need to be aware of when you're digging your hole um, and you know what's been what has been fruitful for us. I chewbacca your chicken, chicken, chin checking your chest, get chop cam, god stand by the boot from the camp. I'm proving I can, I'm proving you fake, like you moving them grams, a Peruvian flakes. I am truly your ape, Caesar the leader, put two in your face, bleed while I leave you, do deeds of a demon, you do deeds of a diva. That hole was a beast to dig, a lot of rocks, it's usually what you run into in urban areas, uh, but what we're about to do now is uh, we're going to put the uh, take the tree out of the pot. I'm gonna break up the roots a little bit so that it could uh, so they could begin to breathe and stretch out inside of the hole. And then uh, we're gonna backfill the soil that we just dug out of the hole back into the hole to surround the root ball of the tree. And that'll be that. You know, come back, put some mulch over top of it. Uh, maybe put a tree diaper or a tree gator bag around it for irrigation and watering purposes uh, so it can get that good consistent um, moisture that it needs over the next couple of months as it establishes itself. 
But pretty much that's how, that's the process as we plant these trees. You know what I mean? It's all good. Oh, make sure your, your hole is wide enough. You know, uh, some people say make it double the width of the root ball. I mean, that's a good practice. Uh, we don't have an auger, so I didn't bring any measuring tape, so I'm just eyeballing it. I think it's wide enough. I think it should be wide enough. Um, if not, then we'll just come back, hack at the edges, trying to spread it out a little bit, and just keep it rolling from there. Take the educated rapper. Clouds be seated. Bow down to the world renowned Brownsville Jesus. Damn what you do. Sleep, your brothers keep a peep, the family soon. Listen, Paul, I am not in the mood. Watch your step, get them bob shot them right in the shoes. The rhyme is incredible, King. I do floss. I've been walking around showing y'all the Sankofa Community Orchard. Um, again, this space is dedicated to agroecology practices. So what that means is that, you know, we're gonna be doing very environmentally uh, sustainable methods, uh, really focusing on people, uh, synthesizing, you know, biodiversity, social diversity, uh, really focusing on justice here, uh, climate justice, food justice. Um, really excited about this space because, you know, um, A, you know, we've been developing spaces all across the region for quite a while, but this is going to give us a really firm foundation for the next I know indefinitely as we uh, build this out. Um, 80 fruit trees, apricots, peaches, pears, apples, persimmons, plums, cherries, you know, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, goji berries, gumi berries. We're just gonna really focus on the fruit here, shrubs and trees. And we're gonna do some small scale kind of growing gardening just to demonstrate but this space is really going to be dedicated to, you know, those perennial permanent plantings. Um, looking forward to working with artists here, you know, building freestanding walls for murals and building structures for congregation and, you know, function as far as storage of tools and programming, places where we can film and, you know, talk about different aspects of the work. Um, Looking forward to be a gathering space, you know, even though we got this COVID, that doesn't mean we can't get out to parks and, you know, green spaces and, you know, connect with nature and, you know, release some of that stress and just have quietude. Spaces could be dedicated, it's, hence the name Sankofa, this is dedicated to, you know, our ancestors of African ancestry. Uh, so, you know, we're looking forward to really bigging up, you know, all of the energies from the Fannie Lou Hamas, to the Kwame to raise, you know, to all the people that came before us that kind of paved the way for this type of work. And, you know, all of the enslaved ancestors that were uh, fighting, rebelling against the system, you know, uh, all of the folks that, the Maroons, uh, 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 all of the folks that resisted against the tyranny of white supremacy you know, this space is, ded is dedicated to them, hence the name Sankofa Community Orchard. So yeah, man, um, you know, it's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now. It's a lot of work that we're doing, but this is a big focus. If you want to get down, support the work, you know, we're going to be doing tree plantings weekly uh, until we get it all filled up. Uh, if you want to support by, you know, buying a tree, uh, Definitely go onto the website or hit the link at the bottom of this. Um, you know, we can't do this by ourselves. So with communal support, we'll be able to get it off and it really be an amazing space uh, for, for community. You know, the idea is black space matters and, and, and we need spaces for people of African ancestry to be able to, to connect to their identity and, you know, also connect back to nature, connect to their own internal spirit. And so, that's the flow, and I'm really happy to uh, be able to share this with you all.